What's up guys, if you're new around here, my name is Forrest and today I wanna to discuss the most common mistakes made by new programmers and a little bit of advice and some tips to rectify those mistakes or even better yet, preventing yourself from making those mistakes in the first place. Now if this first mistake isn't the most relatable thing when it comes to new programmers, I don't know what is and that is ignoring tests. Now I don't know about you, but in my experience, new programmers don't wanna write tests. New programmers or even new hires, they just wanna to, want to go ahead add a new feature, write code, write code, write code with that, without actually testing that code by writing tests. The best way to go about fixing this is learn how to write tests. Take your existing code of some sort of simple program and write a test for it. If you wanna go a little bit simpler, then follow some tutorial online or, how about this? I plan to make two videos this week. How about the second video is me writing tests for one of my AI programs or, or, or something. And if you wanna get into writing tests, which if you wanna be a programmer, a good programmer, you're gonna to have to, that'll be a good starting off point so that you can write tests for your own code. Because believe it or not, every developer, regardless of hierarchy or experience, they're gonna be writing tests. And if they're gonna tell you otherwise, they're a liar. Software is not complete until it is built and tested. So that some words to live by there. Another mistake that is actually fairly, uh, Fairly well known, but people tend to kind of ignore it. That is dirty code. Now, of course, you want to write code as clean as possible, but but the problem is new programmers, whether you're following a tutorial, doing an online course, or you go to college, when you write a program, you write it for that course, and then you forget about it. You don't have to come back to it a year, two years, three years later, and try to maintain or add a feature or something to that code. And that is a problem because you can write the code, it can work perfectly fine. You're like, oh, this is clean code, right? I can, I can read this and that. However, you don't have to maintain it. And once you get into the actual workforce, you're gonna be, or someone else is gonna be, maintaining or implementing something else into your code. So you need to make sure that is clean code. The biggest issue with this is that it, it, it kind of only comes with experience because if you knew how to code cleanly, uh, off the rip, then you wouldn't really have to worry about that. But you kind of have to go through the motion to understand what kind of code is easily integratable. If that's even, I'm not sure if that's a word, but just code that's easier to maintain and easier to expand. How, how, those are real words. Let's go with that. So to best counter this mistake, do your best to learn clean code and just code as much as possible. Go back to some of your older projects and try to add a feature or something along those lines. So you can kind of get that kind of like that fictitious real world experience. A perfect piggyback off the previous mistake and that is ignoring technical debt because when you have poorly written code, dirty code, you're going to be accruing technical debt. Now there's also gonna be other ways where you accrue technical debt and that could be with the updating of languages as well as other things that may or may not be out of your control. But it's also something that you probably won't see on your personal projects. I mean, you probably aren't running linting tools when you're doing some of your your school courses or what have you. But when you have a large code base, you need to you need some way to track all of these errors or bugs or updates or code smells that your your code may have. And that's when the linting tools will come into the equation. And with these tools, it'll tell you what technical debt you have and you need to budget time every week or, or what have you. I'm sure if you're working at a place they have something in place for this. Let's hope they have something in place for this where you can budget some time and go over technical debt. Problem with this is similar to the problem of ignoring tests. Uh, programmers, they wanna hurry up and get on to coding the next cool feature or, or just doing anything that isn't maintaining code or writing tests. So with the technical debt, you need to make sure you maintain that code base because as that accrues, who knows what'll happen to your code base. I like to, I like to equate it to like, it's like modding out your car without ever washing it or changing oil. It's like, oh, cool mods, bro, but uh, but your paint is oxidizing and your motor's got a knock, uh, but cool mods. You don't want that with your code. So make sure you take care of your technical debt. Budget out, like I said, a day or, or, or a couple hours every single week in order to, to knock down that technical debt. You'll probably never see that at zero, but you can get as close as possible until more happen because more will happen and if you never take care of it you're just going to get more and more and more and more and more my problem with making some of these videos is i i sometimes i repeat myself sometimes i try to to refrain from repeating myself but this is one that i will say for every new programmer experienced programmer new college student 
uh, whatever. A big mistake that a lot of these people make, you don't ask for advice. Have you ever seen The Office? Well, whether you have or haven't, there's this one scene that Jim has a new boss. And that new boss asked Jim to get him a rundown of his clients. However, Jim has no idea what the heck a rundown is. So instead of just asking, hey, what's a rundown, which I mean, I guess you can kind of give him the benefit of the doubt because his boss was kind of a, uh, well, you know, he just kind of, well, let me show you. You need a rundown of your clients. Can you get that to me? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What the hell is a rundown? Hey, dude, do you know what a rundown is? Use it in a sentence. Uh, can you get this rundown for me? Try another sentence. This rundown better be really good. I don't know, but it sounds like the rundown is really important. Charles asked me to do this rundown of all my clients. Why don't you just ask him? No, it... I can't. It was like hours ago. What have you been doing? Try another sentence. You can't tell me you've never been in that position. At least I've been in that position. Doesn't matter what kind of work you do. If there's something that you're you're told to do or you don't know how to do, and you're going to try to sit there for three hours trying to figure out what it is, but you never figure it out. How are you going to go ask somebody three hours after that was assigned to you? Wait, what does this mean? I could elaborate here, but I think the point got across and that point that is just, if you don't understand something, just ask, or maybe you've spent too long on a particular task. Like you, you figured you could, you could handle it. Maybe there's something that you couldn't fix a problem that you couldn't solve and you've exhausted all possibilities. Just ask. I mean, if you're just running in circles, you're just wasting time, your time, company time, whatever it may be. So just ask somebody. If you're a student, ask your professor. Ask Stack Overflow. If it's on your own project, ask Stack Overflow. Be, be, be a part of a Discord channel. If you're at work, which a lot of these are gonna happen at work, ask a fellow member of your dev team, ask your boss, just ask somebody. Just say, look, I try to do this, 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 and that. Or maybe you just flat out don't know, so off the rip, you just need to ask them. It's not, it's not, it's not going to be the end of the world because your boss sees that you don't know something. At least you're showing them, at the very least, you're showing them that you are trying to make sure you can solve this problem to the best of your ability, so you need to know all of the information. And that's when they come in. And this mistake, very, very uh, prevalent when it comes to new programmers, but also you may not think about it when you're a newly hired developer on some sort of project. And a mistake is improperly naming objects and probably naming your variables, your functions, your methods, whatever it may be. New programmers make that stake mistake all the time because they may say, Oh, well, I'm going to name this X, Y, and Z. Unless those are like actual coordinates or something, it would be a lot better to more accurately name those variables. The problem with this is that a lot of people don't understand the importance of naming your variables. You gotta figure out a, a, a concise and descriptive name for all of your objects. The reason being is when you use it somewhere in your code, you don't wanna have to go back to where you determined or, or declared rather that variable. Instead, you would like to be able to see that variable anywhere in the code and know what that is referencing. This also goes for people who are new to a code base. If there's some type of naming convention, which there are, particular naming conventions for every single language that there is. You got to capitalize this or lowercase this or camel case this or use underscores here. Make sure you follow those typical language uh, parameters when it comes to naming conventions. But also when you're in a new code base, try to be as consistent as possible when it, when it comes to naming your variables. For example, you could be writing a, a, a program where you have a car, a bike, and a tractor. All of these have wheels, right? But you don't want to just name it wheels one, wheel two, wheel three. You won't know what wheel you're talking about if you use it somewhere else in your code. Instead, use car wheel or tractor wheel or bike wheel. And depending on what your fellow dev team has already determined to be best in your code base, that could mean saying instead of car wheel, you say wheel car. And then you have wheel bike and then wheel tractor. Just those minor variations in these names that could help more people understand. I mean, you can see the very first part of that variable is wheel, and then you see what that wheel is a part of instead of seeing car and then figuring out what part of that car. This very simple example, and it's very specific example, 
but I'm just trying to get the point across that, that it's important to properly name your variables and stay consistent with the current code base in which you're working. And that's all I got for you today. I would like to discuss more of those like new programmer mistakes, like really, really beginner mistakes and go a little bit more into depth there. Maybe I'll do that in a, in a couple weeks here. And also keep your eye out on um, Thursday, 9 a.m. My plan is to upload the uh, coding unit tests or whatever it may be for whatever program it may be. AI program, I don't know. I don't, in all honesty, I don't even know if y'all would be interested in that type of video. I feel like when I get really kind of in the weeds with some of these topics, a lot of people kind of shy away. They kind of just like to sit back and relax and watch my videos instead of like really getting into it. So just, I mean, leave a comment down below if that is something that interests you. I'll probably make it anyway. So I don't know what good the comments will do, but I don't know. I like to read your comments anyway. So just leave something down below. <laughs> also, give this video a like if you did enjoy it, if you took something away from it. Be sure to subscribe. I'll see you Thursday, 9 a.m. And then we're going to we're gonna keep going on with the streak. Maybe I can do two videos a week for the next five weeks instead of just one video a week for five weeks like I did before. At least that's what I announced to Twitter. We'll see.